What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Nab and Row Show. I'm here with my compatriot and partner in crime, Ro. Say hi, Ro. Hi, kids. And welcome back to the podcast. I will apologize, and I'm sure Ro feels the same, but it's really my fault. I had a friend I haven't seen in like a year plus coming to town on Wednesday this week where we typically do recordings, so I did that instead. So this is coming out a little bit later. So my apologies, everybody. That's completely my fault. Sorry, Ro. It's okay. I mean, we have lives outside of here. And That's right. No. I, I enjoyed having the night off, so it was great. <laughs> no, we have no <laughs> life but the Nab and Row show. That is final. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I... Okay. So, just to give you guys a little preface here before we get started. We did not plan anything. We didn't get questions together like we typically do. We didn't plan for this one. We just said, oh my god, we are passionate about this. We hate dumb drivers. Let's talk about it. <laughs> because... Yes. Because I feel like you could talk about this forever. Just bring up stories oh, and just go on tangents oh, yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. So, I'll tell you what. My job, I'm driving at least, oh, dear Lord, 90 95% of the time. Oh, yeah, easy, easy. And my blood pressure is, yeah, yeah. I got, I got like a <laughs> shopping mall of marketing crap in the back of my car. <laughs> but I'm literally... Blood boiling, blood pressure, stress spiking every minute I'm driving around. Except for when I listen to, you know, podcasts, the radio, or something like that. But man, people just can't drive and they're so selfish the way they drive. Like, what's your biggest pet peeve about it? Tailgating. Tailgating, tailgating, uh, tailgating. Yes. Yeah. It is it is so dangerous. Why do you think most people get rear ended? Because mm -hmm. the jackal behind you is tailgating you. Yep. And yep I, totally. Oh my gosh. And I have the two car seats in the back. So if I get an accident with the kids or without the kids, I can't use those car seats anymore legally. Mm hmm They're busted. Yeah. Even if even if they're fine, legally, I could go... I don't know what could happen, but I could get in trouble if I still use those car seats. At mm -hmm. least that's what I've been told. I don't know if you actually get in trouble or anything like that. But so I'm sure there's some sort of restriction. I mean, yeah. they say, I mean, after you, so I've been rear-ended, rear-ended to the point where the frame, I was driving my dad's car and the frame of it kind of bent in. I mean, I was fine. It wasn't, I mean, she was going probably like 35, um, but it was a good Chevy car. So I, I like Chevys, um, uh -huh. but it was a Chevy and um, everything was fine other than the fact that she had hit it and like the frame of the car just kind of like bent in and everything else worked great brakes all the innards everything was fine but just uh, because that all the innards? you know all the inner i don't know what you call them you know you mean engine, engine? well yeah and everything else that goes with the engine all that front <laughs> inner part like i don't know the engine anyway <laughs> shut up <laughs> do i look like a mechanic do i sound like a mechanic i don't think no, so. i'm sorry go ahead continue <laughs> yes anyway so just because the frame was like bent it was deemed totaled which completely yeah. boggled my mind because you're like well it just it looks fine <laughs> well th okay think of it like this imagine your house there was a bad earthquake and the entire foundation was cracked from one side of the house to the other and completely shifted like a foot or six inches you know like a big shift that would deem the house unsafe, and they'd probably have to demolish and get rid of it. Oh, yeah. Pro I mean, yeah. I totally... It, yeah, because of that, structural damage. Yeah. Well, that's basically the frame. The frame is the structure and the foundation of each car. At least... And again, I'm not a mechanic either, but in my... From my <laughs> knowledge, that that's what it is. Like, the frame gets jacked up. Yeah, you can cut it and weld it together and fix things, but it's never going to be, you know, completely that's safe true. again. Yeah. I mean, my Mustang is like that. The whole back end is welded back on it. Because it has a salvage rebuilt title on it. Whatever the guy did that had it before me, there was a big accident. I didn't really ask the question. I drove it. I had mechanics look at it. It was fun. <laughs> but the, you can see... Just wanted a shiny car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not shiny much anymore. It's <laughs> it's a real man's car. But oh, geez. it is welded on the frame in the back end of it where you could tell where it was at an accident. I mean, they did they, full <laughs> detail, new paint job. Yeah. Well, it needs another paint job, but it used well, to have a new paint job. Yeah, they did. I mean, a little bit of add, add, you know, additions to it and whatnot, but yeah, I mean, I would love to go back. I'm never going to find the guy, but I'd love to go back and find the guy and get the story on 
how mm-hmm. that happened. Were you rear-ended? Were you driving mm-hmm. it like a schmo? I mean, what was the story <laughs> from it? You know what I mean? And so you, yeah. you say your dad's car, was it a, like an SUV or a truck? Uh, it was a Chevy Blazer. Mm. Yeah, Chevy Blazer. So it was small, but... Right. You know, it was like a mid-size like a SUV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was nice. It was. I mean, it was, it was good. It was fine. So I mean, you said I, I I know I have a horrible memory. You rear-ended somebody or somebody? No, I was you. rear-ended. Yeah. So how did yeah. your engine get all jacked? It didn't. It was just the frame. Everything else was fine, but the frame. And that's it. That's the only reason. That's it. That's the only reason. And they told oh, that's it, right. Yeah. You said the innards. Yeah. <laughs> the all innards the innards were fine. Were fine. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> See, this what happened. You confused nab. me. Come on. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, I prefer you to call me the nab. Right. We we just discussed the this. Nab. That's right. Yeah. That sounds so wrong in so many ways. So, what is your pet peeve? So, mine is the tailgating. I can't stand oh. it. What's yours? Yeah, tailgating is is definitely up there. It's my number two, but my and I, you know, it could be people are be like, "Why this?" It's when people don't use their blinkers. It drives oh, me absolutely yes. bonkers. It's like it's the littlest thing, and it explains and and tells you so much, yet people don't use them, and it drives me absolutely bonkers. I just I can't do it. It drives me bonkers because it's too oh. hard just to go in there and flip a tiny little switch, which becomes right. habitual where your body does, it, even if you're just going around a turn. Sometimes, uh, yeah, exactly. So it's hard for me to fathom how you don't use one right exactly that's my thing too it's like okay well thank you for not using your blinker like i say that out loud all the time yeah (laughs) it just just irritates me because it's you're communicating to the other drivers around you what you're gonna do and i don't like i don't like surprises so (laughs) maybe that's my issue (laughs) it's just you know (laughs) you know the blinker thing i completely understand i think you should 100 percent do it every time but mm-hmm. i've seen good drivers that have plenty of room they don't use their blinker and go over so it's not not safe they're mm-hmm. checking they're they're going over right but it's still there use the darn thing you know what i mean yeah or like it's we part drive- of your driver's education course oh use my it. gosh and you're at a four-way stop <laughs> and you're just like uh where are yeah. you going and then you start going because you think they're going you know they're going to go mm-hmm. straight or something and so right. you're like oh i'm just going to go ahead and do my thing and then they honk their mm-hmm. horn because they were gonna you know it's just yeah well actually actually that same scenario happened to me today i was on lunch i was heading back to the office i came to a four-way stop um i get the people i approached first and then there was a person to the left of me that approached after and then there's a person in front of me that was there before i got there but he apparently wanted to turn and couldn't because their left my right side was being blocked because someone was walking and so i'm sitting there he doesn't have the front the guy in front of me doesn't have his blinker on so i'm thinking he's you know coming my way and we're all kind of like looking at each other because i'm going straight he's wanting to turn and the other guy's wanting to turn and no one is using their blinker and i'm like can you please tell me what the two of you want to do because i'm oh going my straight gosh <laughs> yeah well here's yeah, here's another problem ridiculous <laughs> Yeah, and here's another problem with those four-way stops. This is why cities are building roundabouts like crazy, right? Because they're they're for stupid people, in my opinion. <laughs> because there's so many dumb people out there that don't know how to use a four-way stop. Like, mm-hmm. I was at a four-way stop today, and I was the last of three to get there. The other two just sit there. They're using the blinkers. They're just there mm-hmm. staring at each other. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm the last one here. I have to wait for you schmucks to move. Right. So I literally wave the one guy and he says thank you and goes and then I wave the <laughs> second guy and he thanks me and goes. I'm like, are you kidding me? They're just being nice. It's like, <laughs> like I'm not being nice. I'm like cursing you out with my hand. Like get your beep beep beep. Get your you know, just move. <laughs> oh, you can see you can't tell I'm passionate about this or anything. Just oh my gosh, I have talked to you while you've been driving and you no. are just like a road raider. <laughs> no, a road <laughs> raider. <laughs> Oh my it's gosh! So angry, <laughs> but you know, okay. So I consider myself one of the better drivers out on the road. Mm-hmm. Not just because I literally will only go five over the speed limit. I never really speed. One, mm-hmm. I have a company car, so you don't want to sure. do that. I yeah, always, absolutely. you know, stop fully at stoplights. You know, I'm always using my blinker. I don't tailgate. 
all that jazz. You know, I have a system mm -hmm. that has these cameras in the top. It's a Subaru Forester, and there's cameras up top, so it will literally slow down and match the speed of the person behind me, and then I can hit a button, and it will adjust to the distance of how many vehicles, I guess, quote unquote, that I have between me and the car in front of me. So I'm always leaving plenty of room, but that's where people go in, cut me off, doing all that stuff when I'm driving safe. That's why I get so heated in such a cranky pants because these people are cutting me off and it's like, I'm trying to be safe here. <laughs> Turn your blinker on for the love of God. Right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, if you ask any of my siblings, they would tell you that I'm like the worst driver ever and only because I actually uh, have a space cushion and I don't tailgate, which all of them do. And it scares me to drive with them for the most part. So they think so, you're yeah. a bad driver because you're a good oh. driver. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I don't speed. I rarely run yellow lights. I follow the rules. Um, yeah. It's my sister scares me the most. Um, yeah. And it just, yeah. So this she, is you right now. You hear this sister. She's calling you out right now. <laughs> I'm calling her. She knows it, too. That's right. You're the worst yeah. driver, sister. Yes. I just, but the, my problem is too is, um, a, I don't like to drive in snow, which I know is kind of weird for you because I know you get snow and, <laughs> you know, but I grew up in an area that doesn't get a lot of snow, so I've never really had the opportunity to practice driving in the snow. Um, and for me, I just get super anxious about it. Um, and then driving in like downtown Portland, I hate driving in Portland. I, I just, I get so anxious driving in downtown Portland. And I think a lot of it has to do with, um, I kind of have like some PTSD from uh, when I was little, I was uh, involved in kind of an accident with my grandfather. And so when I was 10 and um, so it, it, I think I just kind of have like some PTSD from that and um, feeling very, um, A, if I don't know where I'm going, I get super nervous too. But when it's, high traffic high fast there's like five lanes of traffic going because there's idiots out there that just like zoom in and out and like everywhere and it just makes my anxiety just shoot through the roof and it makes me very very nervous <laughs> so driving on like so there's interstate 75 which goes basically from michigan all the way down to florida right it's one of the major ones mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. uh, the the east side of the country um mm -hmm. once you get to atlanta georgia there are literally eight lanes of traffic one way yeah, that just makes me so anxious. And just here's the thing. So anxious. If, if you're <laughs> I'm just even thinking about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're staying on 75, there is a part where within one exit, you get on and then you have to go immediately back off. So across all lanes of traffic to get to your exit. No. It is nuts. And I have towed with my mom when I was moving <laughs> back from Florida. I lived at Daytona Beach. Uh, we were moving back to Ohio and I was towing a small u-haul and so i had to bob and weave that i was it was a jeep cherokee you had to bob and weave that through traffic and oh my gosh people do not care they don't if you're trying to it's, merge no it's horrible it's just you know i know i know the world's a busy place and i get it and people wait till the last minute to do things or they have really fun sporty um, you know, fast cars and, and everything, but it's it's not worth the risk of breaking all the laws or driving fast or, I mean, here it rains a ton and so we do have slick roads and I, you know, people do slide, um, especially after we haven't had some rain in a while after the summer and, um, you know, it's not worth the risk of losing your life or someone else's life trying to get somewhere super quick and not be safe about it because... Right. bad things can happen yeah and so i have the mentality of if you're late you're going to be late don't yeah. try to put everybody else in harm's way just because you don't know how to set an alarm or, or wake up yeah. on your alarm you know what i mean yeah, or something exactly. might have happened but they're still rushing it's like just don't mm -hmm. rush you're gonna to have to find an excuse right. either way or you, something's gonna happen then you're really gonna to have to explain yourself right. right i remember i was coming back from downtown cincinnati and what was i driving i think it was in my truck big old chevy silverado driving that sucker <laughs> back and it merged 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 and this guy tried to cut me off in the median and i'm like no you're being a, a jack hole so i, I swerved a medium and not let him pass me mm -hmm. he continues to speed and find his way in front of me and starts brake checking me throwing shit out of his truck at me and mm -hmm. trying to hit me literally stopping on the highway because he was trying to like do something mess with me i ended up calling the cops on this guy 
and they must have found him because I, I, I don't know exactly what happened afterwards because he ended up going off on the exit and I found a way to trick him and keep going. It's just people <laughs> are just so stupid. Well, yeah. I shouldn't have messed with him in the first place, not letting him pass me, but <laughs> he was being rude and I'm thinking, no, you don't. You stay in the lines, dude. Yeah, well, I'm not opposed to boxing someone in either. If they're <laughs> swerving and being unsafe and I get to a point where I'm like, well, you're just going to have to time out yourself right here and I'm going to help you with it and just box them in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we have tailgating. For me, is number one. Use number two. Mm -hmm. Your number one is blinkers. Yeah, blinkers, yes. Uh -huh. I think blinkers are a little bit lower on my list because mm -hmm. I would say my second is is more of people who cut you off without a blinker so it's not just the blinker it's mm -hmm. driving dangerous regardless if you use it or not like right how about this using the blinker but you turn it on as you move <laughs> yeah that's kind of annoying too i mean or, and, and i have to giggle too of the ones that like leave their blinkers on for a good mile or two. Oh, that's just <laughs> funny you know whatever <laughs> i have to giggle with that but um I had a point I was gonna make it and I forget what it was. I but, mean think about yeah. it. So you turn your blinker on yeah. to tell people, hey, I would like to go that way or I have enough room, yeah. I'm going to go that way. It's not right. who I'm going, there we go. Boom. Right. <laughs> or they put their blinker on for a blink and then turn it back off. Yeah, yeah. No, and and the probably at my like that's another one that's high on my list is the people that are waiting and they pull out like right in front of you yet there's no one behind you oh, so oh, they like gosh. rush to pull out in front of you when they could have just waited for you to go by and then pull out or and <laughs> to top it off they pull out right in front of you and then immediately they take a left and you're just like why why <laughs> i mean you could have waited like three more seconds and you wouldn't have made me slam on my brakes like come on now i don't know if if you know any of this i'm not sure if i'm 100 percent right but in my from my understanding there are a lot of places in the world that scare the living bejesus out of most americans no oh, yes like i was down in santo domingo mm -hmm. and on top of the fact that you don't have a nice car down there because there are scratches on every single vehicle that you see driving down there people are flying sure down right. there walking on on a crosswalk is a dangerous task down there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i know that steph and i went to just walk across to go get some food someplace it was literally mm -hmm. like a block and a half from the hotel and mm -hmm. i thought i was gonna die yeah crosswalks are dangerous i mean not even in in other countries but uh where i used to work uh when i first started with this dental company I work for, I was working um, in an office and we had to park across the street because the parking lot around the office building we had to reserve for our patients. Uh -huh. And um, it was like trying to play Frogger crossing that crosswalk because people wouldn't look. I mean, they would they would see that they had the green light, but they wouldn't see, they would be paying attention to the people that are waiting to cross. So normally what happens when the green light's on that's the time that the people cross. So all these people that are wanting to take, you know, rights down the street don't see the crosswalk people and they almost get hit. And it's yeah. it was so scary. I mean, there was numerous times that I got almost got hit. And I'm just like, especially early in the morning, because we, we had to be there at like 630. Uh -huh. So it was dark by the time I got there during the wintertime. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I almost got hit, or other coworkers too. Yeah, it was just it was just crazy. You just got to be careful. Although I will say, I saw this thing on Facebook a while ago, and they had these like X crosswalks where like, oh all yeah the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Up, right there's right. one in Nashville. Well, yeah, well I went to one, or when I went to Reno, they had one by this casino that we were by, and we needed to cross the street. It was like the craziest thing. I mean, it was super super effective and way safe because there's no traffic going anywhere and if you wanted to you know so instead of going like making an l if you wanted to get to the other side you could just cross down the middle of the street and it was super effective and i'd never seen it in, or like seen it in person just saw it on facebook and it was really effective and i'm surprised they don't use that more yeah no i because i mean it's basically like okay you can walk anywhere just you know yeah we're gonna shut mm -hmm. down all lanes yeah you guys yep. go ahead. Yeah, it was really nice. It was weird to me though. Yeah, me too. I was like, those. whoa. 
This is not. This is not. <laughs> not used to this. this is crazy. I'm just not supposed to be walking in the middle of the street right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It went, it went against all of my. I went against all of my growing up knowledge of you know <laughs> how to cross the street correctly. So think about the cultures of the United States of different type of mm. crossroads for different situations or locations. For example, at Ohio mm. State, there were really there was a a, a like minded conception of how drivers are supposed to react near crosswalks on campus mm -hmm. and a majority of the time is on campus you always stop if someone's waiting you let them go like they have mm -hmm. the right of way it's on mm -hmm. campus um right. you had the occasional idiot that just kept going and didn't care but for the most right. most part people were relatively nice when it came to being mm -hmm. on campus at least at least at ohio state that's what right. i i know mm -hmm. and then again you go down to university of cincinnati nothing against that school i know my dad went there but i'm just <laughs> saying it's a very different culture down there as far as drivers like you just you gotta wait and you gotta look five times and mm -hmm. make sure it's safe before you go anywhere because the car right. will come flying down these major streets sure but then again, Ohio State's one of the one of the largest campuses in the United States. So they're gonna have a little bit more internal, smaller places to drive mm -hmm. rather than the big streets in between all the different buildings. Right, right. Which is a little bit different. But Yeah. So <laughs> So my message to people, if you change lanes without putting on your turn signal, if you <laughs> tailgate people if you just bob and weave out of traffic or do 20 miles over the speed limit because you're late somewhere, just take your license, cut it up, sell your car, <laughs> stay in your home, buy a bicycle if you have to, but don't, don't, just stop driving. You are one of the stupid people that causes accidents. You need to stop <laughs> driving, period, end of story. And the nab and row will not be your friends. That's right. Yeah, I will not be friend of those people. Yeah. But here's another thing. What if you're driving and there is a long line of people on bicycles? And they're right in the middle of the road and there's a no pass area and they're all just kind of driving. You know, it's a bicycle. It's not going that fast. No, um, I live in Oregon. We have bicycles everywhere. They like... Well, that's to me. That's a whole nother. I'm very passionate about some bicycle rules, uh -huh. so that may need to be a whole nother like podcast, just because I live <laughs> in Oregon and <laughs> we have a lot of people that bicycle. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, but I, but but I have that's to say a, that's for another soapbox. <laughs> yes, but, but I just have to say one thing about this. I am hugely not a fan of bicyclists, at least in Ohio, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we have a. It's called the Loveland Bike Trail, which is miles long like 50 plus miles if i if if i believe you can go which takes about an hour by car mm -hmm. ride your bike on this bike path as far mm -hmm. as you want why do you have to be in the road that drives me nuts i'm sorry i do no yeah. you're going well. maybe 20 at your top speed mm -hmm. in a 55 and i can't pass you that's obnoxious yeah i mean uh, give kudos to them. I mean, I'm gonna give them kudos for riding a bike as long as they do and have, and because I wouldn't want to be on a bike for hours upon hours. Oh no! <laughs> so I guess you know, kudos to them. But I just I get really nervous because here we have you know bike lanes that are between the sidewalk and which is totally uh, cool the street yeah which is great but you get like the wobbly bike riders that you, oh <laughs> you're gosh. like so afraid they might just go bloop into your lane and you're like they're <laughs> toast there's nothing i can do with this person so i always have to like i always slow down a little bit and like make sure i can give them some room as i go around them because yeah, yeah. i'm just so fearful that they're gonna wobble off <laughs> and i'm gonna hit them and i'm yeah that would just be so traumatic for me <laughs> i mean so the bike path crosses many actual roads you know like down in old mm -hmm. old downtown loveland it passes i think two different times the bike show does and there's another place about 10 minutes from my house where it connects as well. And I will always stop because I respect those bikers for yeah. using the Loveland Bike Trail. 
Right. Like, thank you yep. for biking Good there job. and not on my back road that I'm trying to mm-hmm. get past. Right. It. But anyways, yeah. yes, that, another podcast we could talk about biking yeah. all day long. We'll, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so do you have anything else about bad drivers that you just want to get off your chest and talk about? I don't think so. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I do get yeah. frustrated with the slow drivers that go 10 below. I mean, <laughs> especially when there's no weather issues going yeah. on. You're just like come on i know you can do it but then i also think too it's like okay well maybe they're a first time driver or Uh you know they are they haven't driven in a while they've had some traumatic experience and they're you know trying to you know get back on the bike or the horse or whatever and and kind of conquer fears or whatever and um you know like i've been there i've i've felt that anxiety and that pressure and um you know like i get it uh but yeah I'm just like, and okay, that's okay. I'm in a place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> people chop chop, but still, in inclement weather like that, they really need to drive oh, a yeah. little bit safer, especially oh, if you sure. have that person that has the two wheel rear wheel mm-hmm. drive car. You mm-hmm. know, that is the worst scenario for driving with those things. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, the Mustang, I love driving in the snow because I get to go <laughs> sideways up a hill. It's fun. It's uh, very no. enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> I love driving so in the snow. I just about it. <laughs> no, no, no. It was actually on the highway. It took a 45-minute drive. It took me two hours to get home. I was in the Mustang. It just started snowing because that's the only car I had at the time. And mm-hmm. part of the highway dips down, I'd say maybe 35-degree angle, and then goes up again at, at another 35, maybe 45-degree angle. And to get up, I had to rev my engine and keep the RPMs up to move the tires. And my tire back of my car pitched to the right. I turned my, my steering wheel to the right and basically went sideways up the highway right next to people and they're just looking at me like bug-eyed I'm like it's the only way I can move up this hill it's <laughs> literally the only way I can okay. go up. yeah it's okay I got under control yeah but, th- but to me that's the difference between people that can drive specific vehicles right. in those situations and right. others that have no idea what's going on and are exactly. like that guy can't drive yeah. like no 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 you just right. don't know how to drive in snow right <laughs> And that's why I call my dad to take me to work. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> uh, well, guys, I think we'll leave that one there. We've we've touched base on things. I feel like if we stayed on our soapbox, we just keep going on and on and oh, talking yeah. about things. And whew, <laughs> we're gonna get heated and go down that rabbit hole. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. But in the Don't midst, no road rage on an iPodcast. No, no, on an iPodcast. Very nice. Yeah, nice podcast. Rep. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's, it's late. It's a Friday, and it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm tired. I burnt. I burnt out. That's my that's my excuse for hey, that. It could be on an iPodcast. <laughs> you don't know. It could. It could very hey, well, guys. Maybe. It could be. Just maybe saying. in a couple months it might be. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. But in the midst of all this craziness with this pandemic of the coronavirus. Um, and I don't know, Ro and I haven't decided if we want to actually talk about it, see if we can find someone that's, you know, a scientist to talk. I don't, I don't know. We were just playing because it's the biggest thing right there or right here right now in the world to talk mm-hmm. about, but we don't know enough about it to really talk about it. So we're, we'll debate and go from there. Yeah. Well, cause we don't want to be insensitive about it too, because yeah. you know, it does affect a lot of people and, Correct. and and you know but there's a lot of things else out there but i just i feel like this particular thing is just kind of out of control at the moment it's everywhere. and yeah it, it's just everywhere and and we want to be um you know understanding of everybody's situations and everything and no. and the reason why things are happening the way they are um so you know, it's just something we 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 may touch about touch about later right. on, um, but um, you know, let's definitely we'll keep washing those hands and um, <laughs> keep everybody safe. <laughs> Sanitize. You don't forget to buy your TP before it's all gone. No, I like that's the, okay. Yeah, I was gonna. We're not on now because I'm just gonna open a whole can of. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, we used to just thing. stop right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're gonna end it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we you talked can re- about yeah. cars and drivers, not toilet paper <laughs> and coronavirus. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you like this podcast, go ahead and jack that like button right in the nose. Don't forget to tell your friends and family all about the Nav and Rose Show. And as always, this podcast is a wrap. Till next time, kids.